Hey, fellow sack lovers, Petey Grizz here. Just got a new knife in the mail today, and it's a unusual model for my collection. Uh, not really. It's just it, it's got a weird set of tools on it, you know, for something. It's not really something I could use, but I just thought it was an interesting knife, and it was a super steel, so I just had to jump on it. But anyway, what I'm talking about today is Wenger's Golfer model. Now, the Wenger Goffer is, they, they have a, a smaller version. They've had a couple of variations of it during their run, but this is the basic model that was just known as the Goffer. Obviously, it's an 85 millimeter knife, which pretty much all Wengers were by this point. And uh, the tools on it, as opposed to the Victorinox Goffer, these tools are much more oriented towards golf. The Victorinox Goffer, uh, at least the original 84 millimeter version doesn't necessarily have any specific tools that are specific to the sport of golf. And uh, I don't know a whole lot about golf. I've learned just enough to be able to talk about it in this video. So if I get something wrong about golf, please forgive me or just yell at me in the comments. That'll be fine too. So the Victorinox golfer has the scissors the main blade and the combo opener. Now you'll notice this combo opener. If you look at a modern combo opener, it is a whole, the whole uh, turn profile, the descent dropping profile of it is rounded. Whereas this has two corners. It kind of goes straight out and drops straight down and drops straight down at another angle to the tip. And this is the earliest version of it. According to SAC wiki, the combo tool came out in 1980, but uh, even on SACWiki's uh, tool inventory list, there's some questions about that and a notation that some people think it was earlier. I think it was earlier, partially because this uh, knife came with the smaller hole here in the scissors, which was from the earlier versions with the single leaf spring. And when I sent it in to have it restored re, uh, by Victorinox, they replaced it with a vintage correct single leaf spring. So s considering those scissors, at least for the 91 millimeters, officially ended in 75, uh, 74 or 75, they may have lingered a little longer for this. So I think this puts this into the late 70s. I think in 1980, the combo tool either likely coalesced into its final form or possibly this was the form it was in from 1980 to 82, and Victorinox just used those single leaf springs that late. But like I said, more than likely, this was earlier on. But anyway, the point, my whole point in breaking out this knife, I've done a video on this before, so I shouldn't spend that much time on it. The point is this knife, despite being called the golfer, does not have any tools related to the game of golf. Uh, later edition of it, eventually it was upgraded to a 91, well, I won't say upgraded, it was changed to a 91 millimeter model. And then the second, the first 91 millimeter model was uh, you know, the exact same, just 91 millimeter. And then they replaced the combo tool with a divot repair tool, which I'll show you what it is on the, on the Wenger Golfer in a minute. But uh, the 91 millimeter Golfer with the combo tool was the predecessor to the compact. It's exact same as the compact, except it doesn't have the hook. So if this was a 91 millimeter, this is what the golfer would look like before it became the compact and they added the hook. And that's the only change to it. And they added the pen, the plus scales, but that was also on the golfer. So the golfer had the plus scale. So really the only difference was when they added the hook in 91, it went from being, they stayed the golfer. And shortly after that, it became the compact. So let's finally get on to my whole point because I tend to ramble, obviously. This is the Winger Goffer. Now, this, of course, to be a knife, it's got to have a blade. So it has a main blade. And, of course, any Goffer needs to be able to open his beverages. 
So it has Wenger's version of the combo opener. So this is a combination can bottle opener. Obviously, it's a different design. I actually like this design a little bit better. I think it performs better as a can opener. I like the, the way this is pointed. It's a little sharper here. And because it's a little longer in here, it, it gets more flat on a bottle cap. But it seems to have better leverage on a cap. I tried it out uh, uh, this afternoon. And uh, I like the the tip seems to be more in line. I was, at least it looks like the combo tool on Victorinox puts the tip at a fine angle, even though I think that's just an illusion based on how the tool's designed. I think it's perfectly centered, but it just seems off based on you know the the balance of the tool. But anyway, the the main golf tool on here is the divot repair tool. Now, if you don't know what a divot is, because I didn't, uh, a divot is when you drive a golf ball into the air and it lands, it creates a dent in the grass. And that impact, that ball can go pretty high and far in the air and have quite a bit of velocity on it. And it can make a substantial dent that can cause the grass to die in that area, leaving, and over time it would leave tons of little brown spots around the golf cars. So proper etiquette, and I assume it's probably a rule at most golf courses, I would assume it's a rule, but it's certainly etiquette, is to have a divot repair tool. And what you do is insert this in the ground around the edge of the divot and pry it up towards the center. And you're basically aerating the ground that was compacted by the impact of the ball and fluffing the grass back up so it has more surface area to do its thing and collect sunlight and do photosynthesis and continue to live rather than just be compacted into a mat and dying. And if this was a Victorinox, that would be the end of the golf golf tools. But Wenger took it even further and they have this, which is a spike wrench or a cleat wrench. This is for the cleats on golf shoes. Now, I don't it doesn't seem like golf is that athletic of a sport to me, like football or something, where you seriously need traction. But I assume that the uh, the spikes have to do with really being able to plant your foot to get a good drive. And I guess there's reasons why you might change your cleats or have to tighten them up. Maybe you don't use them. Maybe you want to be able to take your cleats off and walk with the shoes on. Or I, don't, I just have no idea. So I honestly have no idea. But that's what this is for, uh, adjusting the cleats on golf shoes and finally it has this tool which from my understanding is a club head cleaner which i believe is for cleaning out the grooves that are in the face of uh golf club heads so i guess they get dirt in them and you can just clean out the dirt with this little groove so it has no phillips screwdriver no corkscrew one thing that i think is interesting in comparing it to, I will have a Victorinox 91 millimeter golfer with a divot repair tool soon. But I think when you replace, repair the bottle opener with a divot tool, then how do you open your bottles? And if you know, I know enough about golfing to know that it usually involves drinking a lot of beer. So I guess you just gonna rely on your caddy to open your beers for you and just uh, not have a bottle opener on your golf tool. So that's a trade off you have with the Victorinox where with the Wenger, you get to have the golf tools and you get to have a proper bottle opener, which I would argue is probably the most important part of any golfer's equipment uh, from my understanding of the game anyway. One thing I will point out about this Wenger, and I haven't had this on this model, it seems like this key, key ring sticks out farther. I don't know if that's, I, I've compared it to some of my other ones in my collection and they don't stick out like that. I mean, it's not a mod or anything, it's just the way this is. But one thing I will say about it, getting that toothpick out is nigh on impossible. It's like very hard to get your fingernail in there and under it because the toothpick faces in instead of out like on a Victorinox. You can get the tweezers out a little easier and not that easy, obviously. It's a little easier off camera. But I, to get the toothpick out, I basically have to take the tweezers out and use them to get the toothpick out, which just seems like a whole pain in the ass. It just seems like uh, they should have just put the toothpick and tweezers at the other end and I don't know if that is a problem that's unique or worse on this knife I like my Highlander has basically the same configuration and I have no problem getting those out because this the key ring does not stick out as far I just 
I don't know what it is about that. I don't know if this was like a transitional design or something like that. Because I know they did go to uh, like Victorinox mounting the key rings from the back spring rather than including them as a separate part or a spacer. But it has the little monogram of the golf clubs on it. This one has an embossed shield. I've seen them with printed shields too. So they'll just have a white printed shield like that. Sometimes they don't have the golf clubs. They're usually green, but I've seen them red. I've seen them red with and without the golf clubs. But it's a neat little knife. I picked this one up for, I think, like nine bucks or something. I think that was shipped. It might have been 12 bucks with shipping. Either way, I just thought it was an interesting knife to do a video on. So I grabbed it. Um, anyway, uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please leave me a comment if I've missed anything or if you got anything to add. I'm always looking to learn more stuff and share what I learn with others. And uh, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next one. Peter Grizz out.